Senior security analyst interview questions. Here we go. I have some videos on my channel about security analyst interviews, uh, questions, SOC analyst interview questions. Today we're going to go into senior uh, security analyst questions. These are some questions that actually I have been asked over the last few months, okay? Uh, so these are what you can actually expect in your interviewing process as well. I'm very excited to share it. Before we begin, if you find the video valuable, give it a like and subscribe or follow if you're new. Let's get into it. So I have the questions that I was asked on this screen over here. I remembered them and I wrote them down. So I'm going to go ahead and read off the first one and then I'll provide you the answer. Okay. So the first one we have, there is a contractor that is doing important work for the company. You notice there are a high number of process activity uh, coming from the account and it is causing friction in the network. How would you go about this situation and how would you adjust the policy they are in? So the first thing you can do is gather some context about the activity, okay? You can reach out to the contractor if you don't know the scope of what they're supposed to be doing. And you can also, again, investigate exactly uh, what is transpiring and see for yourself if anything looks malicious as well. And due to the fact that this contractor is doing important work as well, you can adjust that policy to be a little bit more defined so that it does not cause friction in the environment. So that includes things like, you could do things like whitelisting specific processes. You could also implement um, specific privilege configurations as well as rate limiting right if a if this contractor is only supposed to be doing you know a specific type of work with that process and there's a large number of that process executing that would be unexpected right so rate limiting as well and then of course document the policy exception and then monitor the activity afterwards so that would be a pretty good answer to the question uh, the second question I have is, how would you go about creating a detection? You would start with the use case, okay? So what behavior are you trying to detect, right? The IOC or the indicator of compromise. Are we trying to check for excessive login attempts? Are we trying to check for, um, let's see, is this about the, the host, right? Or is this for, uh, emails. So again, we are defining the scope. And then you can gather logs from the relevant data sources, such as from the endpoint or the seam. And then you would define the logic. So certain thresholds, you could use regex, you can check for behavioral patterns, and then you can test it in a lab. And then you can deploy that detection in monitoring mode to avoid alert fatigue, right? Because it is a new detection. You don't know what all could possibly uh, come in for that. And then we can tune for false positives and then document everything. The third question is, how would you describe something technical to a non-technical person? Now, the way I answer this in my interview, it was more along the lines of, I have a team of analysts, right? And for example, if they send up a, an alert for a suspicious or malicious PowerShell script ran, well, if we are escalating that alert to the customer, we can't just provide the PowerShell commander script. We need to, to provide a brief description underneath that commander script because you never know who is picking up the alert on the other end, right? You could be monitoring an organization that's a smaller company where one person wears a lot of hats, right? Where one person does a lot of things and they're not necessarily a cybersecurity nor technical professional, right? So providing a description on that type of PowerShell activity, it gives them an idea of, okay, this is why this PowerShell command is suspicious or malicious. Now, a good way to also answer this interview question would be to, to say that you would use analogies like, for example, if you're trying to describe phishing to a non-technical person, you can say something like, phishing is like, for example, you get a call, and on that call, a person is trying to get your bank information. That's the same type of idea, 
of phishing, but with phishing, it's in the form of an email instead of a call, right? So providing an analogy, and that would be a good answer to uh, how to describe a technical uh, point to a non-technical person. Now, the fourth question was, someone in the organization was sent an email with a malicious URL. How would you tell if they interacted with the URL and how would you remediate the observed interaction? And a great answer to this would be, I would start by checking email gateway logs, DNS logs, and endpoint telemetry to see if the user clicked on the link. Something else you can do is, depending on the security tools, you can run specific queries to see if they clicked on the link as well. You can also check browser history, EDR alerts, or proxy logs, and that would help to confirm. Now, if they interacted with the URL at all, you can do something like isolate the endpoint, because at this point, we don't 100% know what all was in that URL, right? You could detonate it in the VM. Just to be safe though, you can um, isolate that endpoint. Of course, check if it's a server or a workstation first. You wouldn't just want to isolate a server. Then you could perform some triage, like checking for processes, downloads, or persistence. And you can check persistence in registry. If there's any weird or unknown registry, uh, recent registry modifications, that's typically a sign of uh, potential persistence. And then of course you can reset the user's password, revoke their, uh, revoke their sessions, and then you can roll back the host as well just to be as thorough as possible. And then you can block the URL domain, you can block the sender as well. Of course, delete the email and delete the email from the whole environment, right? Make sure uh, to check if that email was sent to anybody else. Now the fifth technical interview question that you could get in a senior security analyst interview is how would you prioritize a high volume environment? And we can do this by weighing the severity of the detection, also the assets value. So for example, a server would be more important to uh, than a workstation. And then you can also prioritize based off the context. So like, was this data exfiltration? That would be a pretty bad thing. And then you can check to see does this align with any threat campaigns? And by doing this, we focus on the alerts with the highest business impact, right? And that's a good kind of uh, key phrase there that the interviewer would definitely, would definitely like is what's the business impact? Now, the last question that you might get is, do you have any questions for us? And this is incredibly important as well. Some people just focus on just the technical interview portion, which is incredibly important, obviously, but also the questions you have for them. You could ask something like, let's say I have a change that I would like to be implemented in our workflow. How do you guys go about a person that has a request for a change in your processes? That would be a very good first question. A second question that you can ask is, what does a typical day look like in this position? Of course, it gives you a better idea of what you'll be doing, okay? A third question that you can ask is, how is success measured for a senior security analyst in this organization, okay? That again, kind of helps give you an idea of what you can do, how you can do it in order to stand out and be the best applicant and be the best employee there. So again, if you found the video valuable, give it a like, subscribe, or follow if you're new, and let me know what you guys think. This has been Senior Security Analyst Interview Questions. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.